Hi folks, I'm Tim. Welcome to The Restoration Couple. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I clad the outside of our new porch build. So stick around and I'll show you how I do it. Right, so finally getting around to getting this cladding on. Uh, you have to forgive any wind noise, road noise, everything. It's all going on today. Battens went on when we built the porch, the membrane's on, and we've got a, a space here, which is like our cavity breather space. Uh, for just keeping the wood dry behind. And when I was down buying the, uh, ordering the timbers for the workshop, they had a load of oak uh, that had been sat in their storage for a year or so that was left over from a project. And I got it half price, five quid a meter, which is still pretty expensive. Um, I guess that works out 45 pound a square meter. But because it's such a small space, because we started with oak, we may as well finish and do the job right. Now, if you were doing a whole house, you'd have all sorts of systems and maybe a story stick and marking things off. And I know Robin Clevett, um, from a pro perspective, he did a really good video the other day on cladding the whole building. I've scribed in this side to the wall, as you can see in this footage. Once that was in place, I really needed that to be uh, an even distance from our corner post here, which is already in place. These trims are about two mil deeper than the cladding will be. And rather than going thickness all these down to, to leave a bit more of a, a reveal, I'm happy with two mil. Uh, it, at least it's something and it's setting the cladding back from the edge. Good scooting. Oh, well done. Thank you, my little mushroom heads. Right, what I've got going on down here, first one's gone in, leveled up and at the height I want. A lot of this ground level is gonna get dropped when I redo this driveway, so that's why I've set that at a level. Anything that goes in here is gonna be gravel, so it's gonna remain nice and dry. Also, an insect uh, screen has gotta be put in there, but it didn't arrive today, uh, but I can still get access to staple that up there. So what I've done is put the first one in, and then I've got a block here, which is uh, a couple of mil, higher than the cover uh, distance on these, which just means we're gonna end up with a little um, gap for expansion and contraction um, between each of the boards. These are very dry, but if they swell, we wanna allow for that. You could mark them all at one, but it's such a small space, this is an easy way to go. What I've done is I'm doing four or five at a time using the little brad nailer, the 18 gauge nailer. You can get stainless brads, but I don't think 18 gauge are anywhere near strong enough for this, nor 16 gauge probably. So I've found these little screws, which I think are designed for floorboards, um, but I've seen something similar use, stainless screws for cladding. Tiny little heads like that, plenty of gripping power, hopefully, uh, and they'll pull them in tight. And the stainless, which is what we need because it's all oak four or five at a time and then I'll draw a little plumb line down and get these in nice and lined up. Well that seems like a good system to me to go that route so I did four that time. I'll do the same all the way to the top now so I'm going to mark in my new layer. As far as the setup goes, got rusty old mitre saw stand, but with a scrap on here, block screwed on there, that's the end, the, the stop for the cuts, because they're all gonna hopefully do the same. Managed to sharpen up an old blade that I dug out, holding out and buying a new saw, so don't really wanna buy any more of these overpriced stupid blades. Just having to play around with the screws you you don't have to drill them they, they'll go in fine but you end up with that little bit of tear out as you put them in and i think if it was a treated timber or something like that with these tiny little trim screws they it almost self heals over but this is so hard and dry 
that it just doesn't work like that. But just only two mil, just to take away, just to give it a sharp cut to start it off. Now, although at some point we're going to put down lighters in the, the overhang and the soffits, I think now's a good time to drill a hole through here just so we can have a security light, like an up down lighter here. We're getting there and I've only got three pieces left. Sneaky suspicion we're gonna be needing some more. It's typical, isn't it? The last three have got knots in, but that was unintentional. All right, day two, it's still dry, still blue skies. So I'm gonna get on and get the first coat of finish on here. Now I went over yesterday with some of the oxalic acid. And what that does is when you get watermarking, remember this is old timber that's been sat and stored. Um, when you get watermarking, there's still a little bit on here, but you can get rid of it pretty easily using oxalic acid. Uh, but I'm gonna go over now, sand it, and hopefully that should just take off the last little bit. But it is a good way to go, especially if you've got that blacking and graying from the tannins in the timber. And I did get some in a cut, that hurts. Oh yeah. Anyway, we'll hit this with some 120. So down here is an example of just where I've washed the area and a few of my drips have come here. Uh, so yes, you could do the whole board, but this, um, this 120 should get most of it out. Oh, don't you love it when you get a splinter right up under the nail? Let's uh, swap out to 240. Little whiz over the whole lot. I'm not gonna be too precious about it. It's outside cladding and it's gonna be hidden by bins and recycling at some point. This is the same stuff that I use on the front, on all the beam down on the inside, and it's a, it's a UV oil, so basically it's gonna keep this more of a golden color and stop it from graying. Nothing wrong with it graying, it doesn't really mean it's gonna be compromised as far as how durable it is. It's just if you want the color, then you're gonna need to stop the sunlight getting into the, the grain of the wood and changing that. That's another reason why I went with the oak. If I was letting this gray, then I would have probably gone for larch or cedar or something and grey oak and grey larch is not a million miles off. Even pressure treated timber greys quite well. So um, that would have been cheaper and it would have blended in. Because I want to go this colour, putting the same finish on any of those softwoods, just it wasn't coming out anywhere near the same look. So I'm hoping when we get the finish on here, it's going to be somewhere near this one. Is that a brush that I've left in there? <laughs> yes it is. I was just about to get out a brand new paintbrush and then I spotted in here lurking in the depths is actually a foam brush which I love to use they're the best way to get a good finish and I think it was Jimmy DeResta in one of his old videos suggested not quite like 
dunking it all the way in. Suggested leaving paintbrushes in because they obviously don't dry out. Nice. Do you want to see a, a little sneak peek? <laughs> what? Well, the cladding's finished and the rain has started and uh, I've actually only got one coat on here, but it's nice and protected and I will be getting uh, another coat or two on once the weather's dry and I can just tidy up this whole area. I also got around to sticking the light on. Uh, all the wiring had been done by the electrician and there was just a connection to do at the top. The, this is just a simple up-down lighter and I got the one with the sensor on. I know you can get them separately and it's probably a tidier look, but this was just a, a plug and play uh, fit and it was nice and easy to get it done that way. As far as the cladding itself, I'm really pleased with how it's come out. It's finished almost an identical color to the front of our porch and it's gonna be a really durable, you know, this is gonna last for a long, long time. The scribe I did this end, I skimmed through in this video, but that was actually in the last episode. So I will leave a link to that and I will also stick it in a card if I can. Uh, so you can click on that and just see how I did it. Really simple method. Yes, you can use a compass or you can use a scribing jig to get a really precise fit. But when it's against stonework like this and it's not like an interior trim, then that washer and a pencil is a really simple way to go. And it also just takes out some of the, the, the resolution of the stone so that it's a more of a gradual fit. So there is a tiny gap all the way down there, but that's not a bad thing. And that's just going to allow for the wood to, uh, to expand and contract a little bit. But also if we got it really tight, while it might be a neat fit and look amazing, we could be trapping in moisture. For that reason, I'm not going to be putting any sealant or anything down there. When I come to repoint this whole wall, then there is the option to just tuck a little bit of lime mortar in there. But for the time being, perfectly happy with that. The porch is looking pretty tidy. Uh, we're almost there with the oak section. So it's just this overhang I need to get cladded and I need to paint that and the fascia just undecided on the color yet. You'll also see our ugly gas meter and other bits over there. The flue's gonna move, but the gas meter is gonna be there. So I'm gonna actually pick up a bit more of the cladding and sort out something over that side just to finish it off. But I hope that was of interest. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Lots more on the way. Big video series coming out next week. So it's non-stop DIY here. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.